We're starting the day in Chinatown today, and then we're gonna work our way up the Lower East Side and into the East Village. And the first stop is Foxy Production Gallery to see this exhibit by Sojourner Truth Parsons. And it's been fascinating to me to really see how COVID has influenced different artists and their work over the last couple of years. And these works were inspired by Parsons' nighttime walks around New York City, as well as just a general isolation throughout the pandemic. And this really explains the absence of humans in her work, which normally serve as this colorful pop against her sharp black backgrounds. But in these works, you do feel that sense of isolation and loneliness. And to create them, she uses acrylic paint as well as collage on canvas to create a series of contrast, not just with color, but with texture as well. The next stop of the day is going to be over to Rachel Uffner Gallery in the East Village to see this very hyped exhibit by Hilary Petchus. And her career is honestly exploding at the moment. She just hit a personal record with a work selling for roughly $1.28 million at Sotheby's in London this year. And this is her third solo exhibit with Rachel Uffner Gallery. And it features her signature, highly colorful and detailed paintings of interiors and landscapes. She's really perfected this flat technique, which is utilized by the likes of contemporary painters like Jonas Wood, as well as those throughout art history, such as Henry Matisse and even David Hockney. Although the paintings lack the explicit presence of a human, the viewer can really piece together a view of who this person is occupying these spaces based on the intimate details depicted, such as a pet or a book or even someone's art collection.
And upstairs is an exhibit of paintings and sculptures by Albert Joseph Perez. And the works portray themes of living and dying and dreaming through the use of innocent animals like ducks and swans. I think they're supposed to convey some kind of dark humor, but I honestly found them a little disturbing. It makes me sad to see animals in any kind of compromising position, even if it is fictional. We're now going to walk down to the whole gallery to see an exhibit by a Budapest-based artist, Bouton Kerestesi. And in true whole fashion, the whole gallery space has been transformed to complement these contemporary surrealist works. And there is no doubt that this artist is highly inspired by the surrealism movement. In fact, the title of the exhibit, The Opium Smoker's Dream, is in reference to the painting by surrealist artist Lajos Gulaxi. And in fact, if you look closely, the vinyl motif that surrounds the works on the bright green walls are a further reference to the smoking pipe depicted in Gulaxi's work. And in true surrealist fashion, the artist mixes images of recognized objects, such as Barcelona chairs, bicycle parts, piercings, lava lamps, vape pens, and even selfie sticks with these imaginary forms in order to create a more believable fictional world. The next stop of the day is Periton Gallery to see an exhibit by LA-based artist Kara Jocelyn. And similar to the works we just saw, Jocelyn's works have this otherworldly quality to them. They mix imaginary objects with real-life ones. However, Jocelyn's stark 
black and white color palette is striking and it sort of introduces this melodrama you'd experience in an old spy movie. And to create this effect, she uses acrylic and polymer automotive paint on a canvas panel. And this will be our final stop of the day. We are at Eva Prossenhuber Gallery to see an exhibit by the Swiss artist Valentin Caron. And this show contains an assemblage of works that Caron has created since 2009. And they all represent, quote, modern dreams left in tatters. Considering he's been creating these works since 2009, this is not a pandemic-fueled depressive outlook, but something that he's been mulling on for quite some time. And Samuel Gross states, quote, Caron laughs at nothing, corrects nothing, values nothing, and keeps a slightly hopeless feeling of loss alive in us. Well, hopefully I'm not leaving you all on too depressing of a note, but hopefully you enjoyed this little tour around the Lower East Side and East Village and Chinatown, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.